The quad active test is used to determine a PCL tear. Place the patient with the knee flexed at 90 degrees supine on a table. The examiner stabilizes the subject's foot on the table and asks the subject to contract the quadriceps while the examiner applies the counter pressure to the ankle. If the tibia is displaced by more than two millimeters during the action of the test, a PCL tear is suggested. The external rotation recurvatum test is going to look for posterior lateral rotatory instability, secondary to damage primarily of the PCL, LCL, posterior lateral capsule, and the arcuate complex. Simply lift both legs off the table vertically by the great toes. An increase in hyperextension and external tibial rotation as compared to the uninvolved knee is indicative of the posterior lateral rotatory instability. The jerk test consists of the subject line supine with the uninvolved hip flexed to about 45 degrees. The examiner's hand is placed over the lateral aspect of the knee just behind the head of the fibula. The examiner will passively flex the subject's knee to 90 degrees and then extend the subject's knee while applying a valgus force and internally rotating the tibia. A positive finding is a shift or a clunk felt at about 30 degrees of knee flexion while the knee is being extended. This implicates anterior lateral rotatory instability. The reverse pivot shift is also known as the Jacob test. In this test, the subject lies supine with the test knee in 40 to 50 degrees of flexion. The examiner is going to place the hand on the knee, just distal to the patella with the thumb on or anterior to the fibular head. The examiner will then externally rotate the tibia with one hand and apply a valgus force with the other while slowly extending the knee. A positive finding will be a palpable clunk or shift as it approaches extension, somewhere between 20 and 30 degrees of flexion. This is indicative of a posterior lateral rotatory instability secondary to damage of the PCL, LCL ligament, posterior lateral capsule, and arcuate complex. The medial lateral grind test is for meniscal tears. The examiner passively flexes the subject's hip and knee maximally and then applies a circular motion with the tibia, rotating the tibia both clockwise and counterclockwise. Pain, grinding, or clicking is indicative of that meniscal tear. The dial test is also known as the tibial external rotation test. The examiner has their proximal hand stabilizing the distal thigh and then will externally rotate the subject's lower leg. The purpose is to measure the amount of external rotation created between the knee and medial border of the foot. The test is then repeated with the knee in 90 degrees of flexion. An increase of greater than 10 degrees of external rotation as compared to the contralateral leg at 30 degrees but not at 90 degrees is indicative of an isolated posterior lateral corner injury. If you have a greater than 10 degree increase at both angles, this is indicative of injury to both the posterior lateral corner and the PCL. Steinman's tenderness displacement test involves the examiner passively moving the subject's involved knee into various range of knee flexion, followed by dynamic movement into internal rotation and external rotation. If the subject complains of pain during the rotational component or lacks full flexion, this may indicate a meniscal tear. In Houston's Plica test, the examiner stands and places the heel of one hand over the lateral border of the patella and pushes the patella medially. The examiner then passively flexes and extends the subject knee while simultaneously internally rotating the tibia and pushing the patella medially. Pain and or popping over the medial aspect of the knee is indicative of abnormal plica. In the Rennie test, the subject stands and the examiner places two fingers or the thumb over the lateral epicondyle of the involved knee. The subject is instructed to flex the knee as if performing a squat. The examiner maintains pressure over the lateral epicondyle during the flexion of the knee. If pain is present under the examiner's thumb when the subject's knee is positioned at about 30 degrees of flexion, iliotibial band friction syndrome is indicated.